Larkin, when are you starting carving? <laughs> oh, we've got two on the ground now, but officially uh, next week. Tell us about what it's like to carve with Halter. Oh, it's really great. Yeah, it's so uh, flexible. It's just yeah. about making up whatever mobs you want to make up and um, you can have multiple mobs in you know, one group and one paddock and then all different colours, so it's quite visual as well. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we, um, I'll, I'll make some mobs and I'll make like a um, just carving mob and then I'll make a carving two mob and then whether it's myself or my staff, if we're in the paddock and we see a cow that's about to carve or looks like she's um, going to be carving soon, we'll just transfer her into the carving soon mob and then everyone can see on the app that there's, these cows might be carving soon. And then once they're carved, um, once again we'll just transfer them onto the um, just carved mob. And then uh, we also pause them, so we'll pause them um, any of those stages. You can pause the cow and then she's free, you know, as she's carving she might want to go out on her own on some nice long fresh grass or something. Or when she's carved, definitely uh, it's a good idea to pause them, then they can follow their calf. And, um, you know, half the time that after those cows would have calved, they'll be out of the mob already separated. The other thing is when you pause a cow, it's um, just make sure it takes a few minutes for the, um, the process to happen. So um, there's a difference between pausing and paused. And if you check on your app on the pause tag, just make sure the cow is actually paused before if you're trying to draft her out. Because sometimes you'll pause a cow, then you know it might take five minutes for that signal to get through to that one cow or it might be a few cows. Yeah, so it's just um, one thing. Just make sure they are paused if you're trying to bring them out of, yeah. from the others. The other thing you can do sometimes, it just depends how your paddocks work out, but if you've got a gateway from, say, the paddock, your carving mobs in or your springers, sometimes I'll set up a break in the paddock next door, and so then the cows, what you carved, you might have paused them, and then if they walk into the next paddock, you can just unpause them, and then they'll get drawn into that break, so they're kind of ready then to be all taken out. Mm -hmm. that, that sometimes works, just depends how your paddocks are laid out. What does the process look like when you find a carved cow? Can you walk us through like what that process looks like from when you find her all the way through to when you put her into her colostrum mob? Yeah, well, the first thing I'll do, I'll pause a collar if it hasn't been paused and then I'll change her into my um, just carved mob and then um, just normal checks and that and then I'll also then record it either on Mindo on the app or I still run a, the old yellow no notebook as well. <laughs> And um, yeah, so just put it in there. But it's it's really good because then it's all uh, visual for all the staff to see. And when you go to click your cows and calves, um, yeah, you, you know what you're in for kind of thing. How long do you run them in like a colostrum mob? Oh yeah, once in the colostrum mob, they'll stay there until, um, well, we do the standard um, four days or eight milkings. Um, sometimes they're longer if there's some problems or something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, same thing, once you draft them off into your, your milkers mob, you just change your mob on the app and yeah, away you go. But it's, um, it's really good because being visual, you can see if, if any cows have um, got in in the wrong mob by mistake or if a cow what's carved the day before, you know, sometimes they, they might jump out of the paddock or somehow get mixed up and they'll end up back in the springers mob. You can, you can see it on your mm -hmm. app as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's using the little, is that using the little like coloured dots to kind yeah, of see that they're yeah, all in the right place. Yeah. Oh, nice. How many mobs are you usually running over carving? Because you mentioned about flexibility of different mobs. Yeah, well, I mean, our farm's pretty, oh, you know, pretty small these days. But, um, so we only do 240 cows all up. But we, we could have, you know, five mobs. One year I had three springy mobs because I had the heifers in a separate mob, then the AB cows, and then I had beef, um, um, contracted beef calves, um, and another mob, and then you, you know you got um, your colostrum mob and penicillin mob and a milky mob, yeah. So do you run your penicillin mob separately to your colostrum mob, yeah. or like do you keep them all in the same place, or just have them as? Well, it's ma mandatory to run them separate, so mm -hmm. that's best pra practice yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, some people might run them with their colostrum cows. You know, it just depends how many you got, but mm -hmm. yeah. But definitely in the in the app, I have them um, separate mob and. I normally use, you know, red or a bright colour for the any of the cows on treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's just my, my colour coding is a bit... Um, I know you can choose any colour off the palette, you know, but you know, my milkers are 
a light blue, a bit like blue top milk, and then um, my Clossum cows are normally a yellow mob, because Clossum milk's a bit, you know, yellow golden, and um, yeah, if I've got uh, sick mob or cows on treatment, they're normally bright red. Yeah. Awesome. Similar to maybe, you know, when you paint them. Nice, yeah. yeah. So just kind of almost replacing what you would have done when you're painting them with yeah. their colours and yeah. alter. Are you doing anything differently this year than last year? Yeah, I think um, generally I ran our heifers once I've carved, you know, with the milkers all in one mob, because like I said, it, you know, we, it's not a big farm and, and a you know, milky mob only maxes out at 240 cows, so, and we bring in about 50 heifers a year. But this year I'm going to... Um, once, probably once we get into about two or three weeks of carving, I'll run, I'll run the heifers, what I've carved separate, and just try and um, really preferential feed them, and then you've got more options where you want to milk them once a day and things like that, just to try and stop um, them, you know, losing so much weight. And it's, it's normally the heifers or second or third carvers which will give you um, your, you know, mating results be the hardest cows to get cycling again and get back into it so yeah be looking after them um, separately. I guess someone new starting with Halter this year or going into their first carving and yeah. meeting? I think um, you know the carv round carving time in the spring you know traditionally you're pretty busy but with Halter um, what I normally do is well, sometimes in the morning or it could be the night before you, you when you've got a bit of time you might be home having a coffee and just set it, draw your breaks and set it all up and then in the morning, you know, your, your cows have come to the shed. We we just go to the shed and the cows are there and we milk them. And then um, during milking, you know, you can have either on timers, you can have your mobs getting dropped or um, you can go down and drop them. But with my carving or springing mob, I always, I won't drop them automatically. I, I want to go down and physically um, see them or if you're dusting or feeding out. But if you're feeding out ahead, that's also, you know, makes it easier Then you can have the cows shifting to their break and then you just can go down after breakfast and you know if you need to feed out or do any other jobs. Nice yeah that's great. We're also um, dusting you know with magnesium so we just dust by hand. Um, oh that's another thing you can draw a, like a, a smaller pre-break which you can dust you don't have to dust the whole break then let the cows over and then you can after maybe an hour or so give them the rest of their, their break you know so that, that's another, oh, just a little hint if, if, you're, <laughs> if you're dusting magnesium and yeah, instead of you know, having to worry about dusting a, a you know, full break, mm. yeah, you can kind of make a smaller one and dust that and then let them over. Sounds so good. Yeah. 